So welcome to Vlog Thursday. I'm flying solo today. Marvin is doing stuff. Uh, more specifically, stuff with the Chamber of Commerce. So I am involved a lot, and I've talked about this before when it comes to networking with other people. That's a really important aspect of business. And uh, at some point, I can't be at all the things I want to be at, and I send Marvin to some of the Chamber of Commerce events. So my involvement is I'm actually now on the board of our Southern Wayne County Regional Chamber. So I go to meetings and do board stuff, and I go to some of the events. I went to an event the other day, and uh, that's the big event they do is about a few hours from here, and they do this annual thing and so I sent Marvin there because I as much as I kind of wanted to go have fun I guess someone needs to do some business and make things kind of work and Marvin's job is kind of sales so that's where he's at today so I'm just flying solo now I've also made me think uh, about doing this is taking my camera to a networking event and figuring out a way it, it's getting easier as everyone knows me as a person who produces a lot of videos and posts a lot of things on Facebook and YouTube so it feels a little less awkward wandering around in a crowd with the camera and I thought about doing it to talk about networking with people and I think that's an important aspect that is challenging and not as easily defined you can read a million books about it because we in order to explain how to network with people you kind of have to create an ambient feeling of how you do the networking. There's not as much a technical guide as there is with technical things where I say, you just do this and say this about people. And so like showing is even more interesting. I mean, I thought, how do I make some videos where I can show how I go to these events and speak with people? And me and Marvin uh, can get together on this because, you know, having a couple people and showing how we network with other businesses and things like that might be kind of a fun video to make. I'm just trying to figure out how to produce it. I was going to do it the other day at one of the meetings I was going to, but I managed to be late to that meeting. So I didn't want to then come in with cameras and start talking to people because they were immediately joking with me about being late. And I'm like, this is a horrible way to start off this video. So I ended up not making the video. <laughs> video I was working on though was a video last night of more wiring jobs and on-site and I'm uh, making a strong effort to uh, do more of those it's just hard to do because they're it, it's figuring out a way to film it and I filmed some of it and I screwed up the video because I got a new microphone and hooked up to a GoPro to make something easy to do and somehow that got messed up the audio did so I got to figure out how to redo uh, some of the audio track on it probably just do voiceover so that's another video that's uh, coming Another video I'm working on is just off camera here is a project that I've had sitting here for uh, longer than I wanted. And it's the uh, amazing Shunas server that's sitting there. I'm going to be working on that the next couple days so I can get that review finished. I've done some playing with it, some setting up, uh, reading through all the documentation, making sure I have a clear understanding of it because I do not like to give misinformation on things. I may occasionally someone said I don't give enough information. I'd rather give you as much as I have, but not anything wrong is more important to me. So I'm being very thorough because this is an enterprise NAS device and it's really cool, but it's got some complexities as far as I like to understand a lot about how it works. Uh, but if you want to just put your faith in the true NAS, free NAS, IX systems people, it works really well. Like if you just assume everything inside of it's magic, but I think a lot of you want to see in depth of how the magic works. And of course, I've been reading about how the magic works, which has made it really interesting. So that's a definitely another video that's coming. I'm hoping you know, I'm trying to always establish a quicker workflow so I can get these things done faster. And one of those things that kind of disrupts me is, you know, doing the other job that I have is I'm not a full-time YouTuber, far from it. Uh, I do YouTube videos when I have a minute. Uh, and I want to do more of them, but I need to eventually hire more people to help do the things that I do uh, when I'm not making YouTube videos, the stuff that runs my company. Uh, but you know, once again, always trying to be more and more transparent about that. So I need to get to a next level so I can hire another person so I can just make more videos because I really enjoy doing that and only have to work on select projects. So on that topic, I will then segue over to something that's going on here in Detroit. And I want to do some more Detroit videos. I'm trying to find some more YouTubers that are in the Detroit area, uh, maybe that are in the same tech uh, John Ryan, I've reached out and I'm really not finding him. The only person I'm aware of, and uh, I, far from knowing me, he's got a really great channel if you don't follow him, uh, referred to as the Detroit Borg. He's the only big YouTuber I'm aware of in the Detroit area. Maybe there's another one I'm just not aware of him, or if they're in uh, some of the other categories of YouTube besides tech. It's not that I'm not as interested, but it's different audiences. You know, if you're a gamer, great. I'm not. I'm really bad at video games. Uh, they, they don't hold my interest. So I like playing them for like 
10 minutes, 20 minutes, and occasionally I do play Diablo 3 still, so. But, so I am trying to reach out to other YouTubers, and they don't have to be in Detroit, but I kind of like the physical person-to-person -person meeting. But I do have some plans at some point to uh, reach out to and figure out how do you approach some of the other YouTubers and, you know, get with them and talk with them and things like that. So that's definitely kind of like, I like the social interaction. I like discussing, you know, ideas for videos in the channel and things like that. And I love hearing the feedback from all of you, uh, which is really exciting. So also, if you know a few YouTubers, maybe you guys suggest, I know, uh, Willie Howe and then Chris from Crosstalk Solutions, both people that I chat with uh, from time to time, great YouTube channels as well. Um, so if you have a few others that maybe want to reach out to or you think I should reach out to because, you know, our channels complement each other, that'd be great. I'm definitely interested in all ears because uh, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of great YouTubers. I, I just don't know them all. And I also don't necessarily have an introduction or know how to introduce myself to them. I'm saying, hi, I want to do something because I don't know what we should do together right now. So suggestions on that might be cool. I thought about maybe some live streams with a couple of YouTubers and talking about things as well, especially around security topics, which are a really big deal. And it's security is getting more and more scary, complicated, fun. It's a, it's a non-stop topic that I uh, keep reading more and more in depth on, especially all these new botnets coming out. Wow. Uh, this one, and it has a couple names I believe they've settled on, the majority of people have settled on because the name's cooler, uh, calling it the Reaper. And it's fascinating. It is the biggest botnet ever built, but we don't know what it's built for. Uh, but it's going to get scary because it, it's way bigger in scale than like the Mirai botnet we had about a year ago that was able to take down uh, dynamic DNS. So this botnet is way bigger in scale and growing at a phenomenal rate of all these wonderful crappy things that people plug into the internet that have no security at all. And uh, it's what are they going to point it at? What are they going to do with all these taken over devices that are out on the internet? Uh, that's that's something that's fascinating and scary. You're kind of watching edge of your seat. What's going to happen next? And it's a lot of, oh, a lot of questions coming out there. So that's a more security top is something I want to do, but I kind of want someone else to bounce some ideas off with on there. So if uh, someone else maybe, you know, do another uh, co-opted blog or vlog about security, uh, that would be something else I'm interested in. So we do talk about that on our Sunday Morning Linux Review podcast, which I've been getting a lot of, uh, we've been reaching out to our listeners on that, getting a lot of feedback as well. And uh, one of them I didn't think about, and this is just me, I've talked about Sunday Morning Linux Review, and I talk somewhat about my YouTube channel on the Sunday Morning Linux Review. But then I realized there's not this uh, perfect crossover that I need to do of, I need links to both. And they com one of the comments we got from one of our listeners on the Sunday Morning Linux Review goes, why isn't Tom's channel linked on a website? I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should. Because I mentioned the videos of, that I might be working on, like my virtualization series of videos. And people are like, you didn't link to the video. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is where I'm really good sometimes at creating, I think maybe I'm good at creating content, but then forgetting to promote it, forgetting that, I'm just like, I just threw it on YouTube. I don't know. Oh, I'm supposed to post it somewhere. And so I'm trying to work on some of that marketing, uh, you know, cross-pollinization of the ideas and getting them all to spread. So that's uh, been all those little things. This is kind of how I start rambling about stuff. Back to another topic that's uh, going on here in Detroit is the Amazon HQ2 bid. So Detroit, and we're going to say Dan Gilbert, uh, who is the guy who owns a large, he's the company that owns a large piece of Detroit with the Quicken Loans. And if you listen to any podcast, you know they're going in heavy on a lot of the ads and things like that. Uh, they put a entire bid together to try and get Amazon to come here to Detroit. This is interesting. I, I don't know if Detroit, because uh, anyone who knows a lot about our city knows we are missing some critical pieces of infrastructure and we have some issues, uh, a lot of issues that may or may not want the city to come here. And if you were lucky enough to watch the mayoral debate, I did not watch it because uh, I'm not part of the uh, proper city of Detroit, not where I live, so I have no voting there. I figured I'd just watch a recap. I did. It's, yeah. It's a, it was bad. It was like, oh crap. So it makes me worry that Jeff Bezos may have watched it go. I, I don't know if I want to put my place in there. But to the other side of it, uh, I believe the Amazon facility needs a massive footprint. And them needing such a massive footprint, they may not put it in Detroit City proper if they were to choose Michigan as the destination for their new HQ that they're building. 
but I'm still, you know, interested in it. Uh, building the HQ here is very different than building the distribution centers here. Uh, I unfortunately uh, don't have the most positive view. I mean, I guess the distribution centers bring some jobs here, but they're not very high paying jobs. And these, and these distribution centers are opening up all over the place. Uh, we're actually, we have one right literally down the street from us, like a couple miles from our office here. And then there's another one being built about 15, 20 miles north of here uh, because we are consumers of Amazon here in Michigan in this greater Detroit area. So they, they felt us worthy of getting the distribution centers here. That being said, I almost feel those jobs are very temporary because putting stuff in boxes, and I'm not trying to belittle anyone who works there, but you know Amazon's trying to automate that. They want to turn that into a more automated production line. So that's why they spend almost $18 billion a year in research. Yes, look that up. Amazon spends $18 billion a year in research, and they're trying to build a second HQ to have more research engineers at to keep future thinking. That's more than our automotives, as in you have to combine all the R&D of the big automotives that we have here in Detroit to rival that level. That Amazon's spending more than Google on R&D. That blows my mind and uh, is a really interesting statistic. So that being said, I, I look at Amazon as maybe a blessing or a curse. I'm not sure the jury's still out. Uh, some people in Seattle seem to have some opinions of them that are both positive and negative because of how they've reshaped the city of Seattle. How much would they reshape provided they're going to land here, which we're actually supposed to find out later, later today. You know, would they reshape the culture in Detroit to put that HQ here? We love all the high paying jobs of engineering and technical people, but the other side of it is, you know, what would that do to the market here? What would that change on the housing market? Good for us that already own houses, bad for us that want to buy houses. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting problem because right now they're facing a housing crisis in Seattle where there's not enough places to put all the people and the people that don't work in Amazon that don't have a job that pays as much as maybe a higher engineering job cannot afford housing and have to go further out to the city. And I noticed that when I was in Seattle, it seemed to be a, you know, a topic, at least with a couple of people that I talked to. I'm not an expert on that level, but it becomes interesting because a company like Amazon has so much dramatic influence over the places that they land. So that's a lot to think about, and it's going to be very interesting to see. Now, other top cities out there, I, I, it seems to be basically on the hyperbole I've read on the internet and read it that the Denver and Detroit seem like two likely locations. Uh, my understanding, and not having been to Denver, but talking to friends that have, is their in infrastructure in Denver is very solid and can support Amazon, but they do have a lot of traffic. Uh, we, we have this little train that goes in a circle. Um, oh, and we built this thing that goes like three miles at one mile an hour. You can outwalk it. So that's basically what we have to pitch for transportation here in Detroit. So if you've been here in Detroit, you're like, you have to walk places or drive a car. I'm like, we're the Motor City. You just drive a car everywhere. That's that's just how we laid this place out. We do not have any, we, I, I, where we're at, we've tried to fund public transportation here. It isn't happening. That's a whole other topic that's, uh, yeah, it's a little messy. But... That's uh, where we're at with the Amazon thing. I, I'm keeping, like I said, eye on it because it will change. So if, if we get it, it changes the dynamics and economics of the area that I happen to own a business in. So that's very fascinating to me. So other things, on to other things, uh, not a lot of other things. I'm keeping it short today because I actually have a ton of work to do. Uh, I've got to get this review done and finished and I'm trying to be very thorough on that. I am doing more of the Citrix Zen server stuff. Uh, I'm going to have a whole virtualization uh, part playlist that I'm putting together because virtualization is really popular. It's really important. We do a lot of it. Well, we're doing some of it and we're doing more of it as, as the feature goes because, you know, it's how a lot of these data centers work is infinitely slicing things up into the virtual swing. And not everyone wants to just stick it in the cloud and uh, they need servers on site, but you don't necessarily need all the servers to run on bare metal. So you want them to run virtualized because you can run multiple servers inside of one physical server, which is the whole purpose of virtualization. So I've really liked everything I've done with Citrix Zen server. We moved our platform, everything from VirtualBox over to Citrix Zen. Uh, VirtualBox was pretty cool uh, and still is. I still use it on my desktop uh, to run Windows because I run everything in Linux. But uh, the Citrix Zen server just, I can't be happier with all the functionality it has. And, uh, you know, I've seen to get some positive feedback on the video I did with it. I think some people just don't realize the level of features it had. And maybe this because they see the word Citrix, they figure it's closed source and, and very, you know, oh, you got to pay a lot of licensing fees. Reality is you get an amazing platform that's open source and you don't have to pay a bunch of fees. Their, their structure for Citrix then is doing 
selling uh, service and support for a product that they give away, which I, I've always liked that. I think that's a pretty cool business model and Citrix seems to be making money. Uh, I've also, I've got a, been deploying some Cloudberry deployments. Um, I actually seen an email from them a few minutes ago come up my phone. As they reached out to us, they said, can you review our product? I said, absolutely. And it, it is a solution because we have a few clients that are really old school. They do not like anything leaving their building. They have multiple companies. So they have, uh, Cloudberry is an easy solution for me to set up where we have NAS over here at one of their offices and servers at the other office. And they have all the backups. They are doing offsite backups. They realize the importance of it, but they do not like anything cloud. Everything has to be on premise. Even the software that we just set up, they just got another server uh, to host everything internally because they just don't want anything in the cloud. And then we have VPNs built between each of the offices uh, that they have to make all this work. So I may do some videos on that too, because it's about network and capacity planning. And we have a few more of those projects coming up. We have an R&D company that we just finished quoting that you, and I think I may have mentioned before because we've been there a few times, Sahana. It's, it's kind of a long engagement process when they really plan things out. But you have to, when you walk in the lobby, the little lobby area, before you may go further, you sign a non disclosure agreement that you won't talk about anything that is beyond the door. So that's where my conversation about them stops. They are research and development, and I can only talk about what happens up until I walk through that door. I normally don't sign any NDAs, but because they're in prototyping, um, I get it. I can't talk about what they do. That makes sense. They do neat stuff that, and I, the reality of it is, I will say this much, I don't know what they do. I looked at all the neat stuff they got. And I'm like, I see cool electronics everywhere. I don't know what you guys actually do. But I do know they don't want anything in the cloud. They're worried about security. So they're just keeping everything on premise and everything's very locked down uh, the way they do all of their stuff. So they don't share out anything and uh, everything's only shared between their facilities. So it, it really creates a very small threat surface by not having anything on any type of Google Drive, Google Docs, shared docs, Microsoft Office docs, they do everything in house. And they don't even email design files back and forth. They just save them into different folders and servers and you may reference that you've done this. So they've got some secure uh, practices and they actually need a 16 terabyte server now to uh, store the next level of stuff because they've outgrown their current server and infrastructure. So we're going to be putting this together and, you know, putting together the next level of infrastructure they were because now they uh, have different R&D departments and they want them very segmented off from each other. So if something were to happen in one, you couldn't hop to the next R&D department and the different connected machines on that. And it's fair enough. That's a very, they they're really want to be very on top of all this, which goes back to running virtualization, running separate servers, uh, firewalls, VLANs. It's going to be a uh, very, it's a, I like projects like this because it requires a lot of thinking. Um, also, for those of you who have reached out to me about PFSense, I am working on and I'm going to be speaking at an event about PFSense, which also forces me to come up with the next video for 2.4, which I've been really happy with PFSense 2.4. I haven't had any problems. All the in-place upgrades have just gone smooth and boring and nothing to talk about. The only thing, and maybe I'll comment on uh, when I do some of the upgrade videos, is sometimes it says failed update. When you say there's an update, you click it and it fails, and then you just refresh the page and then, one, then it says loading update and it works. I have not been able to make that consistently repeat, but I have seen it occur. That's as much as I have for that. When I, I Once I try it, I try to recreate that scenario in one of my virtual labs and I've been unable to make it. As a matter of fact, my virtual ones all have done perfectly fine with no, not a single error message. And I've only seen this on uh, one machine, but it's really weird. They're identical with the VPNs. We have all three of the same firewalls at the locations. One out of three did it. They're all the same. And it wasn't the head end one, it was one of the legs of the VPN, as I would call it. So also on that VPN topic, I am going to be doing a specific video just on VPNs and there, because I learned something about VPNs that took me two hours to beat my head up and learn that you can't configure them the way I thought you could with uh, OpenVPN, PSN. So it's, it, it's something I just thought I could do and maybe I'm still, maybe it can be done, I'm not smart enough to do it, but it's not the way you're supposed to do it. But I became determined to try to see if we could do it that way, which is probably not the best idea for a video, but I like, I like to see if I can challenge myself to get something done. So that's been, that's been kind of fun. And uh, I just locked myself in a room and it's got aggravated after about two hours ago. I'm gonna do it the right way now. But I just wanted to see if there was some workaround to make a uh, peer to one uh, user authorization VPN make the traffic go both ways. And it doesn't go both ways the way I want it to, but I'm gonna do a separate VPN video because 
the VPNs are hugely important, very popular, and I want to make a video specifically on it, so it's a tutorial and walkthrough. It's also, a lot of these videos, and we were just discussing this, because I just did a Facebook Live event with some local businesses, uh, which I can probably link that below. I think it's public. Um, it's on my Facebook page, which I make public. I think the person who recorded it has a public Facebook page, so you don't have to have Facebook to watch it. But all that being said is I... Uh, want to make sure that with these all those VPN stuff and everything else that we are I'm very uh, creating all this content and it's also serving as content and instructions for my staff and that's one of the things we talked about in Facebook live is I don't mind giving away the secrets I guess if you want to call it not that I really think these are secrets you can read the documentation but my tutorial videos serve to me both to educate people who just want to watch them or sometimes my staff would go hey how do I do this thing and I have a video that shows them how to do the thing that way it's easier once I've done a whole video on how to set up the VPN now Tom doesn't need to be the one to set up every VPN that gets sold and then more of my staff can go okay I can follow this step-by-step -step tutorial that Tom put on YouTube and it's a work instruction for how I get something done this is actually why one of the weird videos that I have on there that may not be as relevant to all of you, but I have a podcast production video. That's because there's three other co-hosts and I have a method by which I do the production for a podcast. That video may or may not work for you. You may go, what do I care about podcast production? Well, you don't have to, but it is linked in our notes of how we produce the podcast. And so someone can follow that and see how to use Caden Live and how I use it to produce the podcast, the Sunday Morning Lecture Review. Once again, it's an instructional thing that way if I, for some reason, are unable to produce a podcast or whatever, uh, Tony, one of your co-hosts, or Phil, or Mary can follow the work instruction and go, hey, look, there's a video on how to produce it. So that's another in reason I produce a lot of these videos and uh, software tutorials. But again, I'm ranted long enough, so thanks for watching. If you like your content here, like and subscribe. Um, also, I will uh, mention Willie Howe found an old camera. I don't know what he was talking about. Uh, he messaged me, and I seen it briefly. Uh, about this, but if you don't know who Willie Howe is, go follow his uh, channel. He's another Unify guy like me that we're preaching a lot of Unify love. Uh, he understands the VLANs a lot better. I've, I've referred to him. Uh, him and Chris both that uh, understand it, so I'll link to both of their channels below because I mentioned them in, in here, but uh, great people if you're looking for other similar content to me, and if you have other people to recommend that are like me or that I should reach out to, let me know. Once again, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and click the bell if you want to get noticed of every time I release a video and rant about stuff. Thanks.